How's it going, my good? Jesus Christ. How's it going, my good friends? So uh, this time we have a very special project. Uh, we have a collaboration with uh, Steve from Green Beetle, and we are going to make together a Persian karud knife, if you want to call it. Uh, and uh, he made the blade, obviously, and uh, he made a beautiful work, absolutely amazing. And uh, and I'm going to make the handle and the sheath for the knife. Uh, so definitely go and watch his video first because that's, I mean, that's the main event. The, he made the blade and blacksmithing and all of that. And uh, while you're at it, check out his channel as well because it is a fantastic channel and I have been uh, watching his videos uh, before I even started my own channel and I would highly recommend it. He does all sorts of things from, you know, taking a um, fish hook fish hooks and uh, making a steel out of them or all sorts of weird things like that. He carbonizes mild steel with candy because they have carbon in them and all sorts of really awesome and interesting things that I never knew that uh, were possible. Uh, and so definitely uh, see his video and his channel first. And so um, before we start, I'm just gonna show a short clip of his side of the project and then we're gonna get on with the build. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Now look at this beauty. Okay, I'm just messing with you. Here's the here's the actual blade and oh, look at that. So my part of this knife would be to make the handle and the sheath or the scabbard. And uh, the way I want to go about it is that I want to work with the knife with the blade as little as possible. And it sounds a bit weird, but I want to keep the blade uh, nice and shiny and un touched and on whatever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a few measurements, uh, get the overall look of the blade, transfer it to a paper or something so I can work on the design and work on this, basically the, the material that will follow up on that. And whenever I need to make a fit up, I will, re, I will unwrap it and rewrap it and so on and so on. I think I have all I need for now. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to pick up a material for all of that because I need a very long scabbard, which I'm also going to make out of wood. And I have this, I have this piece of pear wood, which is really nice. It might be a bit too bright for my liking, but we can always slightly tone it down later. And I think I have also enough material for the handle. Okay, this took way more time than I thought it would. But I think we're there. It will go like so.
Okay, we have a slight problem. Uh, is that what happen? What happens is is that the epoxy is preventing from the breast to merge with the other breast. So I have a little bit of outlines, but uh, I believe after the shaping and the engraving and all of that, we will manage to get rid of that, hopefully completely. Now this can be uh, epoxied in the blade. However, I do want to have. Uh, kind of a, a, a pin just locking everything together uh, just to make everything really nice and tight because when I, it comes to glue it up I don't really have a way to clamp it so I think this would be a good idea okay so we are in a, let's call it happy accidents mode <laughs> uh, I don't have any way to drill through this metal unfortunately uh, and I don't want to try to anneal it because, you know, it's going to be problematic. Now I haven't completely finished the handle just yet because maybe after the engraving I need to do some refinement or whatever. And you also might have noticed that the hole is re -holed, I suppose, <laughs> but more on that later. Uh, for now, I just need to decide which size fits the best. Alright. So for the scabbard, I intend to do it in two pieces of wood that I'm going to basically carve out the shape of the knife. Now the idea from what I understand is that one side should be a slightly deeper curve so the knife actually doesn't go through the middle of both of the pieces like that because otherwise uh, it can split the scabbard so that's the idea at least, so I'm going to try to do that. I don't want uh, any of the glue to bleed into the uh, blade area, so I'm gonna leave that dry. I mean, I think that's pretty good, right? I think that's pretty good. Oop.
All right, so you're probably wondering uh, what, what happened to the scabbard? Well, I'm not wondering. Okay, let me let me tell you uh, What's going on? Let's go back a few steps earlier I was staining the scabbard and start polishing it with some shellac and everything like that and then I wanted to put uh, kind of emblems like I always do, I I'm rushing to put the finish very quickly and then it made everything really bad and it didn't work and it started chipping out. And so I tried to, I removed the finish and I tried something different. Long story short, let's go simple. I'm gonna make the scabbard almost entirely smooth and untouched, except that I've added another... Uh, Kind of a ring hook point that I thought would be a uh, pretty cool looking and there's gonna be another one here like that All right, let's see what we've got from this. All right. Okay, that looks cool. And, uh, oops, to clean the pigeon. There we have two logos, just need to cut this off and uh, drill a hole in this one and we're good to go. Okay, so that's the general idea. I have these two rings here which will go like so, somehow. Okay. Hold on a second. That's one. So that's the sheath done. I think that's pretty cool. It makes sort of sense. I mean, I've assembled a let's say a collage of uh, references that uh, suggest to have a similar type of thing. So I'm going with it. Okay, I cannot uh, stall this any longer. I think it's time to glue up. If I've missed anything, then uh, that's not very surprising. I don't know if I covered this already, probably not. But um, so we, as you've seen, there's no hole through the blade. Oops. But uh, there is a tiny notch here and one of the rivets has like a wedge shaped so it kind of like just latches in. Obviously the glue will, will do most of the work but uh, just for my uh, kind of like more relaxed uh, attitude because ap epoxy is not my favorite thing but I think it should be okay. So yeah, let's just, uh, let's just do it. Already. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, 
right, so as you can see, the, we have the monstrosity here. I believe now it's time to let it go and uh, have a cup of coffee. Well, like 15 until tomorrow, I suppose. <laughs> no, but, uh, but really, uh, yeah, let's wait until tomorrow. Kind of don't want to take any chances. And we'll see if uh, the blade doesn't fly off and kill a few birds in outside the window. There we go. I think that turned out pretty awesome. I think that looks really nice. Flannanish. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so let's try the very noisy scabbard. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm super chuffed and happy. So my friend, what an absolutely fantastic and fun project. Uh, now before I uh, ramble on about it, I uh, just would like to mention that this item will be auctioned for charity. Uh, the link for that is in the description. That's an uh, eBay charity and it will be available internationally. So definitely check it out if you want to purchase this. And uh, yeah, I just want to say this was a lot of fun and it was a kind of a new experience for me. I never done something uh, exactly like that, maybe some similar stuff, but not to this caliber. Uh, and it was definitely quite challenging at times, especially doing all the feet up and trying to do everything whilst uh, uh, keeping the blade nice and clean. And you know, when it's your own stuff, you allow yourself to be a little bit more clumsy and all that. I, I just like to mention that in terms of fine polish and refinement, uh, this can get much, much better, much more perfected. But uh, I think this is this reaches my limitations for now, and uh, I hopefully will learn to do uh, things a lot better in the future. But uh, on and all, I'm very satisfied how it came out. So yeah, I just want to give a, a big thanks to uh, Steve from Green Beetle. This was uh, such a a delight to do a collaboration project together with him and especially with such a great guy that I really uh, believe in his way of uh, learning and crafting and what I mean by that that he if he doesn't know something is not afraid to learn it and when he does learn it and can break his head over how to do it he goes up and shares absolutely everything doesn't keep any secrets or any tips and tricks and he shows every mistake he made and I absolutely am for this kind of approach. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with all of that. And yeah, I, I suppose that's that for this video. And I will go now and uh, see you in the next one.